Good afternoon. I'm a former teacher. Good afternoon. Teacher and, and school counselor. Um, I have probably more than just a few words to say, but what I would like to do, um, since our uh, president pro tem, my dear friend Daryl Steinberg, uh, is able to be here with us right now, I'm going to have him say a few words. So, dear president pro tem, would you like to? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Alquist for your nice introduction, but more importantly for your leadership on this very, very important and difficult issue. Um, I'm so appreciative that you um, are helping to make public an issue, frankly, which we need to talk a whole lot more about in California and in our society because there are too many people that are suffering. When I look at the statistics here and see that one in six boys is sexually assaulted by the age of 16, and that the result is that three times those, those young people, innocent people, innocent boys are three times more likely to suffer from depression, 13 times more likely to abuse alcohol, four times more likely to contemplate suicide. This is not just a criminal justice issue, and of course it is that. But it's also a mental health issue. <coughs> I am the author of Prop 63, the Mental Health Services Act in California, passed by the voters in 2004. Its promise, we're going through some difficult financial times, as you know, but its promise is to build a comprehensive mental health system in California that addresses the needs of people living with mental illness. And at or near the top of the list, ought to be making sure as a, an absolute right in this state that we help the young boys who become adults with dealing with the trauma that they suffer as a result of these crimes. And so by, by showing this film, by making this issue public, Senator Alquist, you're doing a great service for the people of California. I look forward to supporting you and your coalition all the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And I just want you to Glenn and Kim and Alan, could you stand up for a minute so that I, I want the pro tem to really see you and know who you are. I know that uh, Daryl's not able to stay for the video, but uh, the video features these three men and what they went through. and how far they've come and what they have accomplished. And I'm so proud of all three of them, and I just want you to know who they are. Thank you. I mean, it it's, may seem like sort of a, just a thing to say, but it really isn't. Thank you for your courage. I can't, I, I can't imagine being public and, and doing what you're doing on behalf of so many other people so that they don't suffer. That, that, that is a great public service. Thank you. Thank you. I have pages and pages of notes that my wonderful staff have written for me, but I am told that I do a much better job when I just sort of speak. And I'm not going to bring you all through every single little thing that I have done in relation to this very important issue, but there are probably six or seven things uh, that I would like to say. The first one, starting with, and Jay Boryarski, where are you? If you want to just stand, stand up. Uh, many years ago, I guess it was a, well, the case came to me through Jane about, was it 2000? Um, toward the end of my assembly career. And there had been a, a teenage girl named Maricela who lived in Gilroy. And when she was a small child, Maricela was raped repeatedly by her mother's live-in boyfriend. And 
the live-in boyfriend said to Maricela, don't tell your mother, or it was either I'll kill you or I'll kill you both. It was something like that. Many years later, um, Maricela had her quinceanera, and a very special time for a teenage girl. I'm a grandmother. I have a, both a granddaughter and a grandson, and they are grand. And um, Maricela was in tears. And her mom said, well, what is wrong? And Maricela just broke down and told the whole story. To make a long story short, uh, Maricela's mother said, you know, we have to take this to court. Jay was very involved with this. And the upshot was that, um, they ca and I'm not the lawyer. I was trained as a mathematician and a counselor. But um, I think they were basically told that the evidence was not of the nature that the case could move forward and it was discarded. Pretty much correct, Jay, right? Right. So Jay and um, one of the jurors came into my district office. I was here in Sacramento, but met with my district staff. And they said, uh, uh, Jay and the juror just said, you know, we really think that Assemblywoman Alquist is the only one who would really take this on. And I did. And uh, the person who worked with me in my capital office said, you know, Elaine, this is dead in the water. You don't have a chance. And of course, anybody says that to me, that just motivates me to do even more. But I remember um, with my arm around Maricela um, presenting in assembly uh, public Safety Committee, and, a, and then the Senate Public Safety Committee. And Maricela testified with, with tears in her eyes. So that was my first experience, and we, we did get the bill out of both houses, and we did get it signed into law. And basically what we did, didn't seem as much looking at it from now, but back then, we got the statute changed from uh, a person's 18th birthday to their 21st birthday. Didn't go half as far as I wanted it to go, but it was a step, an important step. We've had various pieces of legislation. How many since then, James and Melissa? Eight. And where we are now is probably where we should have been in the beginning, and that is to say there should not be a statute of limitations when someone violates another human being because that person who is violated has to live with that forever. And why should there just be 10 years during which someone might get picked up for what they did? And when they don't get picked up, then they go and violate other people. And certainly it is... I would imagine it is very hard if you are sexually abused, assaulted as an adult. I cannot imagine how it would be to be violated as a child. I cannot imagine. I grew up in a Greek family where my parents' word and my uncle's and my aunt's word and my yaya, that's the Greek grandmother which I am now, your word is your word. You did not have a different agenda. I could always believe what my family said to me. And how you can put your trust in someone who misuses that, I cannot imagine. And so for Glenn and Kim and Alan to come forward as well as the others, I commend you with my whole heart because, and I think I'm a very open person, but I don't know that I could come forward with what has happened to you. And our goal here today is to see that all our small children can live in faith and in love and feel that they have a bright future. 
this is an amazing video. An amazing video that Terry and Steve, with all of your support, have put together. The bill that I am carrying will be very, very difficult to get through the legislature in any year, even if it were a good financial year, and this is possibly the very worst. So we need to understand and to educate others that we are talking about a mental health issue and that if people understand that they do this to anyone, and in particular a child, that at any moment in their life, they will have to be responsible for what they did. Because as this video shows, your whole life is affected forever. And we want to save so many of our children. And I'm saying children a lot because it's important that no one be violated, but certainly when it comes to our children, no human being ought to be able to get by with that. So I've said enough. Um, I am honored to have met so many of you in this process. And I also want to mention Mark, who is here. It's been my honor to work with Mark on legislation in the past regarding his daughter, Polly. So after the video, uh, we will have a reception. I want to thank the Kulik family for providing that for us. And I think that is it. And I